Hey, everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Act 3. We are so glad that you joined us. As always, our guests really are fantastic and a recurring guest who I adore is back with us today. However, not in our traditional way. Of course, we are doing this recording by Zoom. So if you hear things in the background like dogs barking or mailmen going by or leaves falling and then you hear all kinds of other sounds coming through, remember it's because we're working from home and we are still glad to bring great information to you through this program. On today's program, we have Michelle Jarvis Wanakut, as I said, a fabulous reoccurring guest. She is the dog psychic and I love her. Welcome to the program my friend how are you i'm great and i'm i'm uh, i'm mostly lovable mostly <laughs> mostly lovable okay now i need to explore what do you mean you're mostly lovable you're totally lovable well you know we all have our moments where we're not all that lovable so you know i'm mostly lovable <laughs> <laughs> well i totally understand that and certainly i think a lot of the members of our community are feeling the same way many of us have been in uh, self-isolation or have been working very close to home for several months now and for some people it could be really um, a, a great opportunity to explore ourselves and for others it's a little bit of a nickel a little bit of a frustration how have you been dealing with covid I honestly practice living life in the moment and I've been practicing this, practicing it actively for about 10 years and I feel that I may have uh, a really good handle on it. So for me, I almost have to remind myself that it exists because I, I, mean, I, I mean, I do a lot of candle lighting and a lot of praying out for people that are um, affected in a way that I don't know um, or, or understand or am a part of. Um, but just being in this conscious moment of living my life, you know, you wake up, you tell yourself you're safe, you stretch out, you brush your teeth, you go have a cup of tea, you feed the dog, like living the, my life the same as I did before. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I totally with, understand. With this other conscious idea of what's going on, but at the same time, staying away from the fear and trusting that there's a, a divine purpose in it all because, you know, perhaps maybe for sure there is. I'm with you on that. I think that there is a divine purpose. Not clear yet, and I don't yeah. think any of us really are what it is, but I certainly have noted that there has been some real changes in the way people are interacting with it, with each other. I'm, I'm curious about one thing, because you are the dog psychic. So as the dog psychic, um, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what that means? What, what, just to remind our, our listeners, even though you've been on the program before, oh, sure, yeah. like, what do you do? Absolutely. I, I guess I forget as well that this isn't um, a normal thing to everybody. What, what, what a dog psychic is, an animal psychic a, a, is, is exactly you when you think of your friend and then they phone you or you go to phone them and they're on the phone already. That's what a, a, a psychic is. A, a psychic takes those, we all have it. It's innate in all of us. And a, t a psychic and what I do is take that little tiny ability and build it and build it and build it and learn about it and learn about it and learn about it and work it and work it and work it and practice it and practice it and practice it until there's so much information saying this is a real thing, these, these images, these feelings, these voices, these sensations that you're getting are, are continually um, receiving feedback um, from the people that I'm working with to the point that I can say I am a dog psychic. Yes. So the dog psychic is, you, I'm hearing, feeling, and seeing what your animal needs, feels, and sees. And we can all do it. Just every, you know, we're busy. We're busy human beings. We're busy, 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 busy. And as busy human beings, we might not be attuned in in the same way. How did you How did you know that this was a calling for you? I don't know if you can hear that in the background. That is my dog actually scraping oh. uh, for a dish of water. And, and so, oh, yeah. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> what, so what I'm going to get you to do, because this is going to, for our listeners, you're going to find this. I mean, this is the human condition. This is where we are. Let's be authentic. I need to put some water in the dog's bowl or we're going to get a whole bunch of interruptions throughout the rest of the show. It's so while I'm While I'm doing that, I invite you to talk a little bit about, you know, your experiences as a dog psychic. All right. I will put the water in and I'll be back. So okay, you go ahead. and I'll return. Go ahead. Okay. So in that situation, what I might do as an animal intuitive who have animals that live with me, I have a lot, you can see them on the background. 
Um, I might take a deep breath and in my mind say, okay, I'm going to need you to stop that. And I will be there to fill your water dish in 10, 15 minutes. You're not lacking of water. You will be fine. And, and what happens the more you practice this kind of stuff is you get this opportunity to see how it plays out. Right? So like anything in life, the more you practice something, the more you pay attention to the results, the more you get to see the results, so the more you get to believe what you're practicing and what you're playing with and what you're learning in life. So Kathy, what I was just saying is as a, an animal psychic intuitive, I might there have said to my dogs, taken a deep breath and said in my mind, projecting it to them, which so I'm projecting it to them. So I'm imagining their eyes and I'm going to say, okay, I know you need some water right now, but um, I'm busy and you're, you know, <laughs> you're going to get water. You know, you're going to get water. You know, I'm paying attention to you. So I'm just going to need you to go lie down for a minute and trust that you're going to get water eventually. And then, and then inviting the people that are listening to play with that kind of thing with their pet. And especially I see with um, separation anxiety, I mean, that's a big deal. I was a dog trainer for 20 years and that's a big deal. With separation anxiety, I always went to the home to see what was going on in the home because it's not always just the dog. And what I'd invite people to do is literally sit down, connect with the dog, look them in the eye. And if you have to say it out loud or if you have to say it in your mind, because um, science has proven that we're projecting these mirror, mirror neurons so we can, animals and people, pick up thoughts, feelings, ideas from each other's brains. We can. That's science. So sitting down and saying to your dog, okay, I, I, I've got to go out. You know, this happens every day. I need you to just go lie down and relax. Um, you're going to be safe. There's some music on. Um, I'm going to be home at this o'clock and show them the clock, show them images. Get creative with it. Play with it a little bit. And then and then you get the opportunity as the animal owner to see the difference this makes for your dogs, your cats, your horses, whatever animal, any animal. I, I can tell you from firsthand experience that that's true and it works. Because cool. I, I know that well, you have been to my home. We have worked yeah. with my girls. Um, you know, Bobby Wilson and Kevin are two Jack Russells that are my sweethearts. They're 12 years old and I adore them. Uh, but they are, you know, they have personalities as all Jack Russells do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, most dogs do, of course, as well. All animals, all people. Um, but what I found interesting was in practicing some of the techniques of sitting down with my girls pre-COVID, pre, you know, all of this other stuff, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that, you know, Bobby Wilson would get very frustrated about being left for a period of time and her, she became very anxious. And, you know, it seemed odd, but I sat down and I had an eye to eye conversation with her. And yeah. you know what? It actually, it was, I mean, I'm not sure she understood all of the words, but she certainly understood the feeling mm -hmm. and she certainly understood the safety level. Yes. And so she stopped reacting in the same way because we actually had the conversation. Yeah. And when she does, backed out now, which really um, is not nearly as often, she still acts out, but not nearly as often. Yeah, um, so do we. Well, exactly. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? There's a lot of free will. There's a lot of free will. You can't just say, I need you to blah, 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 and expect them to do it forever. You well, our, yeah. A husband, a wife, a, a friend, you can't. You can't do it with yourself. Can't, yeah, yeah. no. You can't do it with yourself. Can't do it with your kids. Can't do it. Yeah, no. It's, we, we are, we are just fluid beings and we have to be able to, to understand that these emotions and these frustrations and these moods that we have are just part of who we are. Dogs, yeah. people, what, whatever. Yeah, and, and, and look at it like practicing it when you're uh, working with the opposite, with the positive, working with it like I'm, just, I'm practicing, I'm practicing another way. And then one day you'll find that you're doing it. You're actually yeah. doing it. Like you practice, practice. And with, with animals, the science behind practice is it's 3,000 to 6,000 repetitions to get a perfect behavior, perfected, whatever that is. There's no such thing. But then if, with humans, it's 10,000 repetitions to get a perfected behavior. So we have to practice these kind of ideas, these new ideas over and over and over again to be able to see the results, see, feel, and hear the results. That way it becomes a part of your new belief system and your new awareness. If you're not Absolutely. practicing, you know, if you, don't, and if, if you don't pay attention to the little things when you're doing this um, connection with your animals or with your friends or families or nature or whatever, abundance, prosperity, health, wellness, if you don't listen to the little things, Life will not give you the big things. And I'm going to tell you, if you get the big things before you're ready for it, your head will explode. 
Absolutely. And it's very, very true. It's the little things that add up and prepare you for some of those bigger things. And in preparation of that, I'm going to shift the conversation just a shade, right? Uh, To the COVID piece and how our animals, how are your animals reacting to COVID? Do you notice a change in them? And to some of the people that you're working with, how about, how about them? Like, what do you think is happening for COVID in our animals? Okay, well, I don't notice uh, anything with my dogs because I'm practicing what I preach to the best of my abilities and staying in the moment. Mm -hmm. I do notice that if I detach from that, that they'll kind of act out and get really weird, Mm -hmm. you know, and they start pushing for food or just, I just see behaviors that I'm like, who are you? (laughs) Right. So animals will respond to fear. It's a hormone. It's a smell. It's a vibration. It's a whole bunch of things that come off your body. Again, proven in science, proven in quantum physics, not just the spiritual stuff. So whatever is going on for you is going to be going on for your dogs. And, 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 and we're also tapping into this, the news, like, oh, Lordy, Lordy, the news. Like, how about we take a break from the COVID news and maybe just check once in a while to, to just for our safety levels and our awareness levels and stay off of that. Because it, whatever you're feeling is going to be directly related to your dog. Yeah, absolutely. Directly. Or your horse. Like it, some people, you can't even ride a horse if you're in a state of worry or fear, like you can't, they're just, they're like, no, thank you. They're, they don't want it. It just goes right down into their body and becomes their information. Yeah. They can totally sense so, and feel it. Don't they? I mean, they're, they're really, 100%. yeah, they they're can't aware. Not. An animal can't not notice it. It's about survival for them. Mm-hmm. For us, we can just bury it under a million different things. But animals, they have nothing to bury it under. They, it's right there. It's about survival. So, you know, um, I'm noticing, like you, you were expressing earlier, being, people spending more time with their pets. And I'm loving the Facebook things that are, you know, they're, they're, the animals are talking. They're like, the people need to get out of here. They're driving me crazy. <laughs> right? Exactly. So yeah. probably a bit of that because all of a sudden we're paying attention to them. And they've been conditioned for us to go to work eight hours a day and not be home. And or building relationship like all of a sudden you're noticing things about your pet and they're noticing things about you and the bond is getting tighter and tighter and tighter you know there's just like anything there's opportunities for both sides of the coin absolutely and i can certainly see where the dogs i i I'm a big fan of the cartoon uh, pets. I think it's called just pets that. Oh that, yeah, 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 yeah. Where, yeah. where the parents go out and the the dogs are you know under the blender and they're you know yeah. They're, yeah. they've got a personality. They've got a game show of their own. Like they've got yeah. it going on. They Thank know what you. they're doing. And, and I can sort of see my girls doing that when I'm not home. <laughs> They're like, whoo, she's out of here. Now we can just kick back and relax and not have to worry about how we're going to manage her and what's going on and what things we need to bring to her attention. Animals come into our lives to teach us the lessons we need to learn. And I truly believe from all of the feedback that I've got from my clients, not just from my own brain and making stuff up, I truly believe that animals come back into our lives lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I've muscle tested up to 464 lifetimes with some animals, with some people. Phenomenal. It's, it's really interesting. So Michelle, I think you need to explain what muscle testing is. I know our view, our, our yeah. listeners can't actually see it, but if you could describe what muscle, muscle testing is, um, you know, okay. so, so someone can get an idea of what that means. Well, this, this, okay. So the listeners, so um, you're um, at a party. And you're standing in front of a bunch of people and you're looking at the people and some of the people you're like, Hey, yeah. And other people are like, Oh no. And then the next person you're like, all right. Okay. Okay. The next person you're like, mm-hmm, that's woo. the next person you're like, oh. it, it, that's muscle testing. Your body is telling you what your yes answer is and what your no answer is. I grocery shop like this. Like I'll look at apples and be like, yes, no. Okay. I'll take the yes one right? Because your body will tell you. So when I'm working with muscle testing, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You can Google it. Lots of naturopaths do it. A lot of medical doctors use it as well. Lots of veterinarians use it. Um, some people will, the, the old hippie kind of thing, you know, I'm putting the quotes back at myself because I'm kind of a rock and roll hippie. Yeah, you'd be both. Yeah, people would use a pendulum, right? Or their necklace or in the old, old, old days, old, old days, they'd have a, a needle on the end of a string. Like that's what our grandmothers would do. It's, it's using the energetics of the body to tell you whether 
something is good for you or bad for you or a yes answer or a no answer. Because yeah. the body's really black and white. And again, we plow through it and ignore it and then end up getting sick. So muscle testing is a way to be able to um, get that yes or no answer. So if I'm doing, when I'm doing uh, lifetime, I use my fingers like in an okay position and I squeeze them together because I'm a super skeptic. And even <laughs> I do this work and I'm a super skeptic. I've almost broken my fingers before getting an answer that I didn't think I was going to get. You put the other finger in there like the sexy time sign and you see if you can smash your fingers through your fingers. And if, if you can, that whatever that answer to you is a weakness. If you can break through your fingers, if you can pull your fingers apart, your, your thumb and your first finger, if you can pull them apart with your other finger and you're asking a question, that means there's a weakness there. And so that weakness is a clue that something's going on in the dog's body, in your body. Yeah. You know, that that's you can a follow That's a positive answer. That's a, like a mm -hmm. nope. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, yeah. Sorry. I could go on. To, uh, I actually teach courses on muscle testing. Well, I'm really glad that you said that because I've noticed that, you know, certainly with this opportunity to be working from home, it's different than you going into client sites now or into participants' homes. Um, I, I'm curious, like, how are you managing to teach some of these lessons now? Are you doing it through uh, Zoom or webinars or like if you've got something happening? Tell, tell us more. Yeah, thanks. Well, I started a series of five-week webinars based on a um, two-day condensed course. Um, and I have them on Sunday nights, and they, they, I, I'm on my second set of these five-week uh, webinars. And they're an hour a week, and they're on Sunday nights at, from 6.30 to 7.30. And the next one starts Sunday, May the 31st. But I will keep them going until I don't want to do it anymore or until people stop showing up because it's based on uh, the people out there showing up for this kind of service. It's what they're looking for and I'm feeding off of that vibration, right? Of so, course, yeah. Or so, listening, paying attention to that vibration. So in that, are these sequential classes or are they, you know, each, you know, if you jump in on the second class or the third class, you can sort of go back around the cycle to one, No, two, you would three, have, or? you might have no idea what's going on. Like I every see. class we teach something new and it, so it all goes together so you can be practicing each week um, and have an idea how this works for you. Like anything, there's steps to learning, right? Okay. So, so, if, they're, uh, so if they miss the, this session, the next session after that, we'll start sometime in July then. Yes. Yeah, yes. perfect. So, and we made it at a time of night that's pretty easy for people. And they're recorded sessions as well. So if the people aren't able to show up and, and be an active participants in it, um, we do have it recorded so they can look at it in their own time and learn in their own time, which is fun as well. Both is fun, right? So I'd like to unpack that, but before we start unpacking some of the lessons, some of the things that you're teaching in the, in the webinars, I I'll always invite people to grab a piece of paper and a pen, and this is a perfect opportunity to grab a paper yeah, and a yeah. pen so that you can reach out to Michelle in a little bit and get the, um, and, and touch base with her and, and see how you can register for her programming. Um, you are listening to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7. I'm Kathy Holmes, your host. In the, in the virtual booth with me today is Michelle jarvis Wanaka. She is the dog psychic, very well known in our community for, for just amazing things with animals, has an incredible background in this stuff. This chick knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So you really, really need to connect with her for sure. So we'll come back. We'll give that information in a few minutes. But meanwhile, okay. let's, let's unpack some of those classes. So, so what could I expect on my first class, for example? Is it, a, is it a, a training session for me and my dog? Is it a training session for me as the owner of my dog? Probably Probably a little of both. What, Good what question. Like? So with the animal communication webinar, I'm teaching you to tap into your own intuition in order to be able to um, get clear, more clear answers on what your animal needs. They're, so they're, they're mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual wellness and their stress levels. Right? So the very first class, I teach people how to tap into that, how to be able to even access the information. Is it difficult to access the information or is it about I don't, how open you are? Yeah. Well, you know, it's just, it's like anything. Again, the more you practice, the more, yes. and the more you practice every day in life, just as you're walking through the mall or whatever you're doing through the forest, as yeah. you're practicing these techniques and these skills, they're, they're easy, they're doable. They will affect your life positively on all levels. 
with, with your relationships with yourself and with the animals and the people in your life. It's a really great class because we're not just teaching you how to tap into your animal's well-being. We're teaching you how to tap into your own answers. Like, how yes. do I hear? And that, especially as a woman, will drive you crazy when you don't know the answer to something. Absolutely. Especially where healing is involved. Oh, right? oh my. I mean, I, I can so many feel, options. I can feel that through my body just in this conversation. Is yeah. That, is that, that, that complete, you know, trying to tap into understand what's happening. I think that people, and you know, I don't know how relevant this is to be honest with you, but I think that so often when we're busy doing the business of living, we detach mm -hmm. from our physical selves. Oh yes. 100%. Right? We're not feeling necessarily. And then as you oh, talked about that. earlier, it's that knocking on the door that says, bam, right? I, I, I'm going to give you the big stuff because you stop paying attention to the little stuff. Yeah. Might start out as a headache, might turn into migraines, might be a tumor. Like it's like your body will tell you. And that's science. That is science. There's a hundred books on it. There's a hundred scientists out there explaining it to us every single day. And still we're too busy to pay attention to it. So yeah. Yeah. this, you know, taking courses like this are, and I've taken hundreds of courses like this. And as a child, I always knew what animals were thinking and feeling. And I was empathic. So I could always feel what was going on with the people. Mm -hmm. And to me, I was like, well, if you just did this, this, and this, you wouldn't have that problem because I could see the solution. But it took years to recognize that that was uh, a, a gift. And, and it's in my family's bloodlines on my father's side as well. So, you know, she, my, my great grandma was the, uh, in Drumheller, Alberta, the psychic that predicted all the births and all the deaths. Wow. Which is the interesting thing is I work with a lot of the word we call death, which I call passing, right? That's my, my God given talent at this moment is to support people through the grief journey with their pets. Right. Cause I think it, I feel and know to be true. It can be a beautiful opportunity for healing and ceremony and grace. Well, and you've written right. a book on that as well. Oh yeah, I did. a workbook. So let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that. I was going to. I want to go back to the seminar part or the work, the uh, <laughs> webinar in a bit. But let's yeah. since we're here, let's talk about that amazing book. Okay, I'm laughing because I actually forget all of the things that I do because I'm just like like I said in the moment. I'm just practicing being me in the moment. So I yeah, love you I in the moment. Book. You're perfect in the moment. Thanks. Always. So are yes. you. So are you. You're so good at it. So I wrote a big book called, I give you permission to grieve for your dog. I give you permission to grieve for your dog. And now this can be your cat, your horse, your bird, your goldfish. And it's a workbook. So it's, and it's probably one of the only kind, and especially coming from an, an animal communicator, a psychic, a clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient human being that also was a dog trainer uh, for 20 years who followed a lot of different modalities, not just one form of thinking, because I'm not that girl. I don't believe one form of thinking. So, you know, writing this book from the perspective of losing my dog suddenly from cancer and having that horrific experience to over the years having other dogs pass in which we were able to create this ceremony and grace with. So the book is about, it gives people a place to land, yes. a place to take all of those feelings because what I'm seeing is you put it on Facebook and people tell you, get over it, get a new dog, it's just a dog or a cat or horse, whatever it is, you should be healed by now and people are broken. And on that note, I actually have a Facebook page called Pet Loss Grieving Gracefully. Fantastic. It's a big mouthful, but it's the, the title of my second book is Grieving Gracefully. And all of this information can be found through thedogpsychic.com. Super easy, thedogpsychic.com. But yeah, people need a place to land because it can tear you apart and break you down for years and years a passing of your pet. It absolutely can. And I've seen it happen for a lot of people. Oh. I really have. I, people that, you know, are very stoic in every level of their lives and their dog passes or their cat or loved pet mm. and they are just beside themselves. And we, yeah. we think about grieving when we think about our parents, when we think about our, you know, our family members, when we think about our spouses. Um, and, and for whatever reason, you know, we don't offer, and I, I think that you have been the absolute flame of change in that way, to make it okay to grieve for your dog or your pet and it not yes. be 
you know, something that we should be, you know, having a bit of shame around because some people yes. do some people feel that you know I, I, I this is silly i shouldn't be grieving over my dog so much this is silly i oh, shouldn't yeah. be over my my rabbit or my mouse or my whatever oh, my pet is i think you're going insane is what and what you experience and oh, what i hear over, over again right and there's you touched on it there's shame there's blame there's anger there's guilt there's fear and that goes everywhere to all the wrong places when you're when you don't have a place to work it out or to land it or to be able to talk through it. I study trauma as well. So, you know, I never stop studying what I'm talking about. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like it's about helping people um, feel safe in their skin. Is Absolutely. All of this stuff is safety, 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 mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually safe, right? All of this information. And I'm curious because we were talking a little bit ago about the, the workshop and the webinars yes. that you're doing right now. So are, is one of the classes of the six in the series about grieving? Yes, it is. It's, it. and it's not towards the end where we have those conversations mm -hmm. with the pet. Like what, what does the pet want? Who do they want to see again? Are they ready to start their passing journey? And that's what I call it. It's a passing journey. It's not, is the dog going to die? Okay. Hey, 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 back it up, back up the bus. Yeah. It's a passing journey. So let's be present in this, huh, this, I'm in the journey again. I'm like this whole year for me has been a journey with three of my dogs in the passing journey. So, you know, I'm, I'm also there with the people experiencing this as well. It's so I'm going to take a deep breath in that for a second. Not because emotion was coming up for me, but just to, just to sit in that for just a second. Just to, to be present, to be with it. Yeah. Um, to, yeah, to find that respect for everybody who's listening right now that this is a trigger for as yeah. well. So yes, we do touch on it. In the work that I do, I, I avoid taking people into their pain. So a lot of people think this animal communication um, is, you know, well, what's the animal going to tell people about me or what am I going to learn? And is it's going to add to the trauma I already have in life? It's not the way it works. It actually lifts 10 to 20 years off of your shoulders. I've literally watched people's faces go from, from uh, in pain to 20 years younger from the beginning to the end of a grief session in which I do grief sessions or after reading the book or after taking courses because what we're doing as women is we're putting the power back in other women's hands and other men too I work with men of course as well we're putting the, the power and, and and as human beings this is what we do we share the information that we learn so we can all when we're having conversations or sharing um, education there's something in you that goes Oh, yeah, I know that. I forgot that I knew that. Or I didn't think of it that way. And this is what all the classes and all the courses and all the sessions and all the work that I do is based around is opening up that little memory for people. Whatever that memory is, that the, the healing, the aha moment, that ah, I thought that, but I didn't know if it was real, right? It's This kind of work is about putting the power back in the person's, the people's hands for whatever they need. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense to me. Absolutely it does. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting on the passing of a couple of my dogs over the years um, and, and noticing, you know, the presence of them and, and they were very kind to share and tell me that it was time for them to pass forward. I they, love that. They, they knew. And, yes. and it wasn't easy for me or for our family, for my son and for, mm -hmm. you know, I, I laugh about my other Jack Russells and call them little narcissists because, when, <laughs> because they, when, when Stephen passed away, which it was my shepherd healer cross, uh, she died at 15. And she, she basically told me, she said, you know, mom, I'm done. I can't walk yes. anymore. I, I'm done. So when she collapsed in front of the patio doors and said, that's it, she meant yes. that's it. Yes. Um, and then, of course, my little Jack, Jack Russell's when the when the uh, fantastic, amazing uh, vet came over to help with the ah. journey. Um, you know, my dogs just kind of sniffed her and jumped over like they, they didn't pay any mind whatsoever. Then I yes. was heartbroken. I was like, this has been your family buddy. You slept on top of this dog yourselves as little dogs. You've slept with, this is your pack and you're, yeah. you're jumping over and running to the backyard as though nothing ever happened. Yes. Well, you know, it's, 
passing for pets, what animals have proven to me, is it's only as hard for them as it is for you. That's interesting too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can find beauty and grace and ceremony in it, so my second book, Grieving Gracefully, if you can find a way to grieve gracefully, um, I mean, first of all, we have to heal a whole bunch of stuff in our own trauma experiences in order to be able to grieve gracefully, because that's what the invite of an animal in passing brings up. It brings up to heal and the healing of all of those wounds before us, because we're, we're being triggered exponentially by all of those wounds. So if, if you can, when, when working with your pet to help them come over to the other side, if you can come to a place, even where you can sit down and say, okay, I'm crying like a maniac because I love you, man. Like, yeah. I love you. It's yeah, what absolutely. humans do. It's how we express love until we learn how to express it through just gratitude, which you cry as well. It's just a different kind of crying. Yeah, right? I'm loving the gratitude. Piece. The <gasps> gratitude is my favorite. I mean, the, 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 the more gratitude there is for the life and for the, the, the passive, for, for the experience. Just the, the whole experience. All of it. Oh, I love that, Kathy. And it's so true. And you know, we throw around as, as spiritual people, as spiritual people, I got the finger quotes up again. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I also was lived through the 1980s and wasn't so much of a spiritual people. No, nope, neither was I. My I big my hair and my naughty moments. moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few moments I talked to God pretty <laughs> intimately. <Yeah. laughs> I was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so that, you know, like, so if you can just have those moments where you're falling apart and say to your pet, okay, I'm falling apart and it's because I love you and I'm having a hard time with this and I'm going to need some clarity through you. I'm going to need some messages or through my guides. I'm going to need some support here. And, and, and what happens is you'll notice that support shows up in friends and family and magic and miracles through your pet, whatever. But just having those conversations. And I invite people all the time when people phone me and they're, or, or contact me or email me and they're in absolute distress and pain. I'm like, talk to your pet. Tell them every single thing, including you can come visit me from the other side if that's possible. You can show up in my dreams if, you, if that's possible. You can um, mess with my computer system if that's, and it's- I'd rather you didn't do that, buddy. I love yeah. you, my dog, but please leave my computer alone. <laughs> my computer can hardly hold itself together when I work with people in this Zoom thing or the Facebook chat. <laughs> From, when I work with people who were working with the pets on the other side, yeah. they come through technology like- Isn't that neat? Nitroglycerin. Yeah, wow. it is. It's wow. a, one of the easiest ways. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm just talking about this stuff off the top of my hat, but I've seen thousands and thousands of examples. So that's why I can speak with this, what I know to be true is. Yeah. I also I, know it to be really weird. Yeah. In all fairness, it is. Really true. It's totally but, weird. And it's, yeah. it's unusual, but it, it's not unusual at all. It's yeah. unusual because it's not something that we're comfortable with necessarily. Lots of people are not comfortable with the idea, the, the woo-woo. This isn't woo-woo though. As you said, uh, so much of it is backed up by science. Yeah. Like, there, it's energy, right? It is yes. energy. And, yes. and it's something that needs to be explored in a really big way. And as you explore things, as you st start teaching the community more and more about this right then that openness comes up then it just makes the fabric of our unity so much better our Hallelujah. Is so much a part of everything that it is that we do every single day I yes can't, i can't imagine i mean heaven forbid you know there is going to come a time when my girls and all of our pets will be um as you say you know passing in, moving passing, forward, yeah. in passing and going on to the next level yeah. um i saw something on facebook the other day that really I admired. Uh, it had nothing to do with pets, but it, it, it did in a, in a way to me kind of um, accelerate how important this understanding of, of moving, passing forward to something better, moving on to something else, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was about, it was a posting that had to do with a woman who had forks tattooed on her arm. And what, and what had happened and where she, she had cancer and she was passing over uh, herself and her pastor had said to her, I don't understand the fork thing. Like she, because she had said to him, when I die, the only thing that I want is that when you do the cremation of my remains or my ceremony, please make sure that I have a fork in my hand. And I thought, well, what a, 
tell me more. So as mm. I, as I read through it, basically what she had told the pastor was that when, uh, when you're at a event, right, when you're at a, a buffet or you're at a party or you're at a, a celebration of some kind, very often uh, you're told, just keep your fork. Something else is coming. And it's usually dessert, right? Oh. It's usually like a it's usually like a piece of cake or it's something delicious and fabulous. Yeah. So the the hosts will say, keep your fork. Keep your fork. And so how the pastor translated this in this woman's death is that she kept her fork because the next passing over, the next stage mm. was really about the next best beautiful gift. I'm going to tangle up my neck right now. I know, me too. Like it just, it's, to me, it's a moving place. And so when I think yeah. about that for my, my girls and I think about them, you know, maybe the tattoo would be, you know, here's my paw or, you know, the fork in the paw or something like mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm obviously gotten very abstract in that last bit. But the point is, is that there is something more. And if we can really celebrate and tap into what we have and what we're in, in the very, very moment that we're in it. Yeah. And then as, you know, we know that this beautiful love of our lives does eventually have, like all of us do, this opportunity to go on to the next level of our journey. Yes. You know, to kind of go there with this gratitude of there is something more, there's something bigger, something yeah. better, right? And I see it with every single client I work with, like they'll ask me a question and I'll answer them and then they'll be like, that was my childhood dog. Like they'll ask, has my dog been with me before? Or, I, or, you know, do you see my dog with other animals? And I'm like, ah, one in particular, I see a brown horse and like a turtle shell colored cat and a white fuzzy dog. And they're like, ah, they go all crazy because I'm getting these images that I don't know from anywhere. Like, I don't like, how would I ever know that? And, and it's confirming for them that this is to be true. And then Yesterday, I ran into a girl down at uh, Rutherford School Field, and um, my beagle went running over to her, and I said, oh, okay, you know, he can't hear, and she said, it's perfect. Our dog just passed away, and so we had that conversation, and so we started into this spiritual conversation. She said, oh, we're a family of psychics. I totally understand what you're saying. She said, we still hear him barking. Wow. Yeah, and my last, I worked with some people last week, and their dog, they have white carpets, and they see every day knew of his footprints showing up in the carpet and they you know they're vacuuming over it thinking they're going crazy and then the footprints show up somewhere else footprints from a small breed dog in their carpet that's amazing i'm sorry i love that it's a little freak. i love it when people share stuff like that that is my fuel that is my gasoline that 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 moves the the makes the juices well, move yeah i was gonna say the mercedes but i drive a ford flex because it's the only thing all my dogs fit <laughs> <get> in <laughs> moves the ford flex well, and you have a number of dogs too. Tell us about your pets. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like I for sure have uh, 1,500 dogs. Um, <laughs> I right now that I can see with my visual eyes have three dogs. One is 14 and I believe him to be my dog from my 20s. And I have a 12 year old who I believe to be my mother's dog from her childhood and then i have a little female so i have two weimariners and a beagle cross um the it's so hard to talk about them because it's i'm like i'm going to talk to you about dog perspective now i'm going to tell you their 30 names that they all have now i'm going to tell you their personalities and i'm going to tell you what we do all day together and i'm going to tell you all the lessons i've learned from them and how we work together and how they heal other people when we go for like it's really it's a challenge to explain my dogs and that's why I write books <laughs> through my dogs and through well, my perspective and what they've taught me. Which is a perfect segue to how someone can get your books, right? How can, how, how do people, Michelle, get your books? Well, they're, they're on Amazon, but you can also, again, just go to the dogpsychic.com and check out all the interesting little options that we're constantly renewing and updating on there. The dogpsychic.com. <laughs>
I think that's a great plug. Hey, listen, everybody, you're listening to Act 3 Radio on CHLY 101.7. I'm Kathy Holmes. I'm thrilled to be your host. And in the virtual booth with me is Michelle Jarvis. Mm -hmm. She is the dog psychic. Uh, she, she has is. been a guest on our show a few times, and I always love talking to you. Uh, just love it because I, you you always open up that spectrum of, you know, that, 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 that unknown right there's a there's a place of the spirituality that you go to with the unknown that just feels so good i yeah I, I and just go it. play in it that's my invite is to just go play in it a little bit and especially now especially now people oh. have the time where well maybe not all do but yeah. a lot of people actually have the time to be able to spend some more time with their dogs you know i noticed with with lately with my girls um because a couple of the dogs in my neighborhood have recently passed um and i didn't know that before Ooh. because of covid i've been sort of doing a lot more walking around the neighborhood than i traditionally do simply because i'm usually at the office or you know out in the community and i'm not able to uh to to uh, spend as much time with the girls walking. Um, and I met a neighbor up the road the other day and I, I walked past her house. I couldn't even tell you how many times. Um, and she, every time my little girls go by, cause they, when they walk they you know, they're coming like they're, <laughs> like all these, you know, that they're coming right They're They're panting. They, you know, like, like, I don't know what the deal is. It's not like they're, they don't have choke chains that they're being like, yeah. dragged or whatever, but they, they're, they're especially Bobby Wilson. She's a dog with a mission. And so you, you were supposed to live in Montana on acreage with those two dogs, or maybe you did in a past lifetime. Cause they're just I, like, I think so. I need to be free. I need to be free. Oh, I know. And, you know, all of my dogs have been like that, to be honest with you. They're all free spirited in every way, shape or form. Cool. Anyway, the, 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 the story behind it, though, is that this lovely woman on the corner, um, you know, she has recently lost her dog. And so what her comment to me, which just made me feel so good, her comment to me was that she kind of felt uh, like she had dogs again because of mine as they go by. She, oh. said, she was like, they, they, they give her that feeling of, oh, well, I really miss my dog. I'm not ready to replace yes. or get another animal, but, but, but your dogs are coming by and they're all so silly and, you know, yeah. she, 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 making their noises. It fills noises up your love cup. It's it fills up your love cup. It does. So, and I just, I, I thought that that was an important kind of feeling to share with our audience because, you know, sometimes it isn't about us, but it's about the delight that our pets bring to others in our community as well. Oh, right? wow. Like yeah. people that are, people that are isolated, uh, you know, that I'm, this woman is certainly not isolated in my, I, I don't think she is, she may be, but I don't think she is. Uh, but there's a lot of older adults in our community that really, you know, they they are either in hospital or they're uh, in facility or they're, you know, they're just not able to take their animals with them any longer. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so many have had to go to shelters during this period of time. Um, and it just, it's heartbreaking to know that, that there are people out there that are struggling without their pets right now, but have no choice. Do yes. you have a, do you have a take on that, Michelle? What do you think about that? Well, I have this um, idea in my head of life about that we have these blueprints in our life and that we write them out before we come here. And, and, and remember that dogs come into our lives to teach us the lessons we need to learn. So if our dogs need to go or get to work with other people, like if their job is come to completion with doing their service, their little life service, their little lesson teaching or their support, their, their love cup filling with us, you know, maybe just honor them, bless them, thank them when you're putting them into these shelters or rehoming or whatever, because perhaps there is another um, life for them to be filling and to be caring for. Because the high majority of the shelters in the world are not um, high kill shelters, especially in Canada. In Canada, you know, people are doing everything they can. There's hundreds of dog rescues, private ones, um, government ones, all kinds of things. And, and I have a lot of rehomed dogs and I have dogs that no one else would take etc etc um and i am so grateful for those people being brave enough to be able to rehome or put them into a shelter and you know our shelters again the shelters or even the sbcas when i used to volunteer at the sbca i would tell dogs this is your dog hotel man you're just here until they find exactly the right person for you like yes. you're okay you're safe people are going to get you're going to get food you're going to get walked twice a day which might not even happen in their real life that they had yeah. before they came here. Absolutely. So I would always have this attitude. So 
a similar attitude, like trust that animals come into our lives to teach them less, the lessons we need to learn. But it's not just us. They also are, are, have other people to work with in their lifetimes as well. So, you know, if, if you are having to say, I'll see you to your dog because I'm in the hospital or I'm in hospice or I'm in passing, I would invite you to say to your dogs, thank you for the job that you've done for me and with me all of these lifetimes. And I know we'll see each other again. And I just honor everything that you've brought to me. List all the things that they've brought to you so they can be just proud of themselves. Trust that in some way, shape or form, this communication that you're having with them is actually effective and especially effective. And then just send them with love and blessings to where they have to go next. Like, even if you're the mother-in-law that's having to take the dog to the shelter, like, just stop for a second and say, thank you for everything you've done. Bless you in your journey. May you be filled with love and joy in your next family. And trust, as well, little doggy or little horse or little kitty, trust that you are, in fact, teaching all of your lessons to all of these people everywhere you go. You are valuable. Yes you are valuable. Just remind them of their own journey. And the same thing with the passing journey. Remind your dog of the journey. You're going to go yeah. over to the other side. You're going to see grandpa. You're going to see grandma. Because what if this is all 100% real? Exactly. And if it's not, if it's all just a crock of blah, blah, blah. No harm, no foul. Thank you. No harm, no foul. I've always believed that I would rather believe in a higher power. I'd rather believe in God. I would rather believe in a higher spirit than not. And if I'm wrong, oh, well. I it's mean, a I, beautiful thing to think and feel. Absolutely. And, and I get to see never it. Served me, it's personally yeah. never served me wrong. It's yeah, only me, ever me. been, it's only ever been joyful in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And got us out of the 80s. So and that got us out of the 80s and, you know, the 70s in my case. 70s, <laughs> oh. 80s, and 90s. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. You go, girl. But listen, yeah. honey, there's something else I have to share because mm. I just am so delighted about your next journey and this fabulous new booklet oh, creation that you've yeah, okay, really, really. Who gives a sit? That's <laughs> who gives right. a sit? You heard it. <laughs> Who gives a sit? Talk yeah. to us about who gives a sit. Well, I was a dog trainer for 20 years and specialized in um, everything from um, wiener dog puppies to um, pit bulls from the streets in LA to Mexican rescues, wolf crosses, you know, your crazy red lab puppies, like just everything across the board. I didn't stop all day, every day for 20 years. So this book is this quick little compilation on how to train the dog with uh, caring, really caring about it. And at the other side of the coin, like, okay, well, who gives a sit? Like, <laughs> who gives a sit? But you, you know, we need to keep our dogs alive. We need to keep them safe. We need to teach them English language. And we need to do it again in a graceful manner. And a lot of times what I've seen as a dog trainer, or I mean, you're not training the dog at all. You're just training the person. Totally. It's, the stuff people do is completely chaotic. You'll say, put your hand down and they have their hand in the air and you can literally go over to them and, and, and lower their hand and say, okay, it's still in the air. I can see you. I'm, I have my, I can see you. So, so in the book, I like, I'm calling people out. I'm calling them names. I'm mocking them. I'm like talking about your dog crawling up into your hairdos. Like it's, it's a, a crass overview of a really good dog training program. And, and it's important to remember that there are a hundred ways to train a dog. There are a hundred ways. And I invite you to explore 17 different ways as an animal owner. Like, don't just take it from me. But, and, I, and I say that in the book as well. And it's just a really fun way to be able to train the dog, to have some clear, conscious, tried, tested, and true experience with your pet from a person that's a real dog handler because a lot of the information that's out there are, are from people that aren't they they don't have the experience like some no, of the stuff i agree I, with you i'm like yeah. okay boo yeah so, and i'm and i'm super open-minded and i've again taken hundreds of classes and courses from some of the world's top master trainers and spiritualists etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is just a kind of a little um, Scorpio attitude who gives us it kind of a um, version of a really good basic to advanced training program. It sounds like a gas. 
it's it hilarious. Sounds like a guess. Yeah. I I personally find humor is a great way to solidify technique. Thanks. It I is. really do. I mean, it just it sits yeah. with you so much longer. I'm personally I'm a tactile person. I need to do it, but yes. when I'm reading something that makes me laugh, it's like doing it. Well, because you can visualize it too. You can totally. visualize all the ups, the downs, the ins and out, the dog tackling you, the person falling on the ground, the long line wrapping around their legs. They're, you know, ask them to do a sit and now they're in your face, like they're over your shoulders. Like you can visualize it. So when it does happen to you, you can go, oh, and not want to strangle the dog. Of course. Because we lose our temper so fast. Yes. Right? We do in training. And it's, I always say you've got, you've got 15 years to train the dog, but you know, start now. Yeah, you know, I'm told that Jack Russells are supposed to live for 20 odd years, right? Wow. This is what I'm told. I'm my other girlfriend, who's who is a uh, dog groomer, owns a pet store, and all of that. Amazing woman as well. I'd love to hook the two of you up. You'd love her. Cool. Um, but I, I, I mean, she is, she's brilliant, and and she's also. Um, she said to me the other day, she said, you know, sweetheart, she goes, I know that we had Moose because Moose was the first Jack Russell in our lives. And I've had a few. She's had a few. Um, and, you know, I know that Moose lived for 20 years. He actually, Moose lived for 22 years. And, and by the end of it, he was like, you know, just such a great dog. But yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, so, and Moose was my favorite dog because he was just so fabulous. Cool. Um, and then so many of others I've seen are 18, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. And so, and my dogs are very youthful. They're very young in spirit. Uh, but she said, you know, she said, sometimes it's really only 15, 16. So you just mm -hmm. kind of, and I was like, I don't want to hear that. My dog's going to live forever, which yeah. by the way they are in their own. Yeah. In <laughs> essence. Just saying. Yeah. The heart cannot lose what it has once loved. It I cannot. Love it cannot. And, and I, they're there. They're around you. They are around you and you will see them again. As crazy as that sounds, you will look back into their eyes and say, holy cow, my grandson has my dog from when I was in my 20s. You know, something you just like that. You just feel it. You just know there's yeah, something that's there. But yeah. the thing that I'm thinking when I think about the girls at their age is it doesn't matter if you've got 15 years to train them. They're still puppies all the time. They yeah. consistently have this new learning. I mean, some, some train up very, very quickly and very easily. They're all Others, different. Others are more rebellious and we people. just need to be more patient. Yeah. Yes. And I took Pepper, my palm pug cross, my vicious little palm pug. I took him at 14 years old to do agility and he rocked it. Wow. I couldn't keep up to him. And I was like a full athlete at the time and I couldn't keep up to him. That's incredible. You know, mind you, I was like holding my glasses and my hat on at the same time, completely <laughs> unprepared to do professional agility. Like <laughs> not dressed for it at all. The things that we do, hey. I know. You know, I, I'm curious about this. I mean, we're our, our program is going to be closing up pretty quick here. We've only got a few minutes left, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm really curious. Um, before we go into you know the the teachable moment, the life lesson, the you know that that imbibe. What would you say though? I'm curious, uh, Michelle. What has been for you like? What 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 have one of your dogs or the many fifteen spirit dogs? taught you one thing like that just has consistently come up over and over and over again with these dogs as, um, your, as a teaching for you um it's two things it's don't quit before the miracle is about to happen in in living with them and training with them in um looking for answers and the other one is um that they're always right there uh, yeah. your, dog, your dog is only a thought away, whether you're ha holidaying in Maui and you start to think about them or whether they're on the other side, they are only a thought away. Yeah. And you can tap into that energy and that vibration anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Do you know, I found for myself that, th that especially as the years have gone by with my girls, I miss them more and more all the time when I'm not with them, right? Yeah. I find like their connection. There's a, there's a, you know, there's a, a safety in my spirit that comes by yeah. having these girls, you know, just around. And when I'm not well, and many of our listeners know that I've, you know, have an autoimmune, uh, challenge. very huge challenge that's been okay. very frustrating for a long period of time right now and is still creating havoc beyond measure they say that psychic intuitive people get the shit kicked out of their physical body 
Well, I'm getting the shit kicked out of me for sure. It's not the sad about that. Sorry, you get, get the, the shit kicked out. That's right. That's right. We don't swear on this program. That's an expletive. We but but we meant it in the in the literal sense, not not in the figurative. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, the well, no, actually figurative, not literal. Um, but the but what I notice with the girls is that you know when I'm not well, like they just they just make me when my a system is down, I just look in their eyes and it's like, mommy, you got this. Mommy, you're okay. I love you, mommy. Oh right? yeah. They're so, they're so unconditional all the time. Yes. And y if you look at your dogs long enough or strong enough, you will see the love they feel for you yeah. right back. And then you, and then it goes back and forth and then it, you just start feeling it. And, and loving an animal can help you love yourself more when you don't know how to love yourself. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that there's something at a cellular level. You have to fe look in and feel, feel it. it. It is one of the most beautiful things in the world. There, I mean, again, dogs come into our lives to teach us the lessons we need to learn. And, and looking into their eyes and asking, what do I need to know right now? No matter, and listening for that answer, that's like, please do that with your animals, all your animals. Just sit and take three deep breaths and say, what do I need to know right now? And just sit and listen like you're on hold on your phone. You know what, honey pie? That just sounds to me like your takeaway moment. Thanks. What a great takeaway moment. Just be present. Just be there. What do I need to know? What do I need to know? What are you trying to teach me? Mm -hmm. Honey pie, how do people reach you? The dog psychic dot com. The dog psychic dot com. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quit my day job for singing. Is not my forte, but me it either. certainly is yours. Oh, look at me. <laughs> look and, at you. Go. And a singer. And a singer. Excellent. I, 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 Dog psychic singer extraordinaire author darling author teacher, webinar you support name it. Pa passing I'm so good at this I'm just so good at my own thing like I yeah I'm we all are a whole bunch of things all of us yes I'm here to teach people how to tap into that and be able to use it in their lives with their pets and you do a fabulous and fine job i do thank you i've got a good team of invisible people that work with me maybe <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of those invisible people Seems people like can tune into you on facebook yeah. they can join you through the dog psycho there was a, the name of the other facebook page you talked about earlier would you mind oh, repeating that pet loss pet loss grieving gracefully grieving gracefully and it's a private page so whatever people are posting only the people there see it you have to be you have to be accepted to the page because it's sensitive it's, it's absolutely it's happening. very important and people can get your books let's give the titles of the books again who gives a sit my who gives favorite a sit? that's on the dog psychic.com and then i give you permission to grieve is also on the dog psychic.com but it's also on amazon and through balboa press it's it's everywhere just google that stuff and it'll show up but like my husband says Go to the dog psychic dot com and he'll figure it out for everybody. That's what he says. I'll figure it out for everybody. Don't you be loving that? <laughs> I, husbands are good for those things for sure. Thank you so much, Michelle. It was wonderful to have you on the program. It's always grand to have you here. Thank you so much My for pleasure. showing up again. I'm with you. Ladies and gents, I'm so glad that you tuned into our program. You have been listening to Act 3 on CHY 101.7 FM here in beautiful Nanaimo. That's Chili Radio. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of incredible programs on CHLY, so make sure that you check out the website for CHLY 101.7 there as well. Check out our Facebook page for Act 3 Media Productions, and certainly you can check us out as well with our new upcoming website, which is wwwat 3 media uh, uh, productions as well. We are still working on getting into Shaw Studio for our television program, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Of course, Shaw Studios are currently closed right now due to COVID-19, but we will be back uh, in the studio soon. Thanks so much for listening and tuning in. We'll see you next Monday on Act 3.